What's up guys, this is Ray, aka Meatloaf Man, and uh, welcome to episode 4 of the Meatloaf Vlog. Now, before I go any further, I just want to apologize in advance for the uh, big delay that happened uh, in between the uh, last episode and uh, this episode. The uh, The reason why this episode took so long to come out than, uh, than on schedule was uh, because uh, finals week kind of hit me hard in the face. <laughs> So um, I had to put aside everything else that I had to do online and I had to start focusing on all of my, uh, my college work so I can get it all done and make sure I pass the uh, first semester. Uh, and yeah, that was a very treacherous week. But uh, you guys didn't come here to uh, listen to me talk about that. So um, I'll just uh, leave it at that and uh, move forward with the actual episode itself. So again, I'm sorry that this uh, came out late, but completely out of my control and hey, you know, because of that, you guys are now getting two episodes uh, at around uh, the exact same time frame. Like, uh, this episode will probably be out on uh, Friday the 19th of December. And episode 5, which was originally planned for the end of this week, uh, might be out either next week or maybe it'll still be out by the end of this week. But regardless, uh, you guys are getting two episodes sooner than usual. It's uh, in a manner similar to Death Battle. It's... Uh, my personal way of saying uh, Merry Christmas and sorry, but uh, let's move on. So this episode, if you guys couldn't tell from the thumbnail, the title, and the uh, the uh, picture you're seeing on the screen right now alone, or if you couldn't guess by that silhouette promo I put out on Twitter like I usually do for uh, episodes that are upcoming, this episode is going to be about my thoughts in general on the uh, upcoming uh, comic book movies. And I'm only going to be talking about specific ones. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk about... Uh, talk more about that in a sec but uh, this was originally a topic suggestion by uh, Isaac Lips my uh, great friend uh, who is um, Red Link of Team Triforce and is actually the original first ever contributor to a topic suggestion for the show so um, I kind of cheated last episode with uh, the 90s uh, talk with Lawrence and uh, that was kind of a last minute thing but this is the uh, the true first ever topic suggested episode to say because I had planned this episode in advance this was always meant to be episode four and uh, oh yeah and I once again thank you for that Isaac <laughs> so um I'm only gonna be talking about specific uh, movies that are like comic book adaptations I'm not going to be uh, talking about every single comic book adapted movie that's coming out in the next like 20 years or so like I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be talking about uh, Marvel phase 3 or anything like that um, I'm only gonna be talking about uh, five films that I've chosen specifically that are essentially major in the film franchises that uh, they are related to and that I'm actually interested in going to see and that I actually have a uh, relative knowledge about. So um, I'll just say right now, like I said before, I'm not going to be talking about Phase 3. I'm not going to go too, dip, too deep into the, uh, the uh, Justice League films. I'm not going to be talking about Sinister Six or Venom. But I will be bringing up uh, Spidey 3. I'm not going to be talking about Ant-Man or anyone. I'm just going to be talking about these five films which you're going to be hearing. So, And I apologize for how weird I'm sounding right now. This is the first time that uh, I've finally had a solo episode. And I kept telling Lawrence that this was supposed to be a solo series. But he kept insisting to come on anyways. So... No, but no offense, though, like, you know, I seriously want you back on an episode, bro, but not anytime soon, because like I said, the Meatloaf blog from the very beginning was always supposed to be a solo series, and uh, he is always considered a guest when he comes on, so the entire point of the series is for me to improve how I speak orally, so uh, the more I do these solo episodes, the better. All right. Oh yeah, and I apologize for any background noise that you might hear also because uh, I've tried my best to like close all the windows and stuff, but you might still hear some car horns or traffic sounds in the background, possibly, and you might also hear my cats fighting in the background. I don't know why they do that, but eh. let's move on with the episode itself. Okay, so uh, the first movie I'm going to be talking about is Avengers 2 Age of Ultron, which comes out on, uh, or at least it's planned to come out in 2015. Uh, May 1st, 2015 to be exact. As you guys couldn't tell from the title alone, Avengers 2 is the sequel to the first Avengers film, Age of Ultron. We've, uh, we've, we've always known since the beginning that there was probably going to be a sequel to this film because uh, the Avengers was a really successful film and I thought that it deserves all the praise and credit that it gets. And 
Funny story, actually. I actually got to see The Avengers before it came out in theaters. Uh, the reason why, uh, well, actually, I don't know if I could explain why, but uh, technically speaking, I'll just say this and leave you guys to interpret uh, from then on because I don't want to explicitly mention anything or, or give any implications, but I technically got to see the Tokyo premiere of The Avengers film before it came out in uh in american theaters i won't mention how and i won't like you know endorse the methods of how i managed to do it but i managed to do it anyway and i got to see it in advance uh before anybody uh, or at least any of my friends anyway and uh, j just to uh just to get this out there i did support the official release i went to go see the movie in theaters and uh you know paid for my ticket and everything so the first avengers film definitely was something that no no other film franchise that focused on superheroes have managed to actually come to accomplish what i'm trying to say is that it is the first movie that managed to unite multiple superheroes into one single movie and the best part about it is that each of those superheroes had films beforehand and had time to develop their characters and have stories of their own before finally meeting up so then that way it isn't just a rush job and we're just throwing all these superheroes in at once and we don't have to rush in their stories and everything like that into one single film and not give the audience time to breathe or intake any of the information that's being processed to them and y you guys know what I mean but you know it all started with uh, Iron Man and it went to the uh, the Incredible Hulk and then afterwards uh, Iron Man got another film I think it that's how it was in the order. Then finally Thor and Captain America and then it finally led up to the Avengers itself. And um, what do I think of the first Avengers film overall? Well, I think it was pretty freaking fantastic. <laughs> that should be a given at this point. And uh, I really do appreciate um, the way that the cinematic universe is uh, written and is played out. Marvel has definitely been putting a lot of effort into their films in recent years, you know, unlike the uh, previous years. Uh, well, well, actually, no, that's Sony. I was about to say, you know, maybe they, like, put effort into Spidey, but that was, like, mostly Sony. But um, I can say right now, I haven't seen any of the uh, Marvel films from the uh, 90s and before then, but the films that we have right now are probably way better than what we had before then because... Um, a person we had on Team Triforce put it best for one of our Season 2 episodes. Uh, he said that uh, with movies like Daredevil, and uh, he didn't say this one, but I'll add it in anyways, uh, Howard the Duck. Th that, that was back then when Marvel didn't really give a crap about the films that they put out, and they're just going to make a movie out of it and you know, try to see if they can make it into a cash cow. And you know what? That's still kind of true to this day, but uh, unlike back then in the uh, 90s and 80s and such, Marvel is actually putting in effort, as I paraphrase from that person who we had on. The casting, I think it was really great. You know, I, I, I like Chris Evans as um, as Captain America. Uh, you know, it's funny how he also played the Human Torch. Yeah, definitely. He, he is the perfect fit for that role. Uh, Mark Ruffalo does a fantastic Hulk, even though he wasn't the original Hulk in the uh, Incredible Hulk film. But uh, he still does a good one in the current days. I don't know if Hulk will get another film, but uh, Robert Downey Jr., oh my god. <laughs> Robert Downey freaking Jr. He is Tony Stark. There's just no question. You you cannot get anybody else on this planet to play Tony Stark. Robert Downey Jr. is the definitive Tony Stark slash Iron Man. I invite all of you to think of one actor who could possibly replace Robert Downey Jr. I dare you. I don't know if anyone could compare to him, really. You know, he, he, he he's not like Spider-Man. Like, he's... You know what, though? This is comparing apples and oranges, but he's kind of like J. Jonah Jameson. He's that one character that needs to keep his actor, even though it's like an alternate universe film or something like that. I know probably, you know, at this point, I don't know if Robert Downey Jr. is getting tired of playing Iron Man. I don't know if he actually is or if he's still looking forward to doing it, but I just have to say, n nobody else can play him better than Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark is what got me to be a fan of um, Mr. Downey in the first place, and um, you know, I, I, I just think he fits the role best. That's just what I feel. Scarlett Johansson obviously uh, does a great job as uh, Black Widow, and uh, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> He's also a uh, perfect role for Thor, if you ask me, because um, I don't know why, it's because Cause he's, he's acting so ridiculously medieval 
like when he's playing the role. I don't know, maybe you could get someone else to, to play Thor as well, but I don't know who else could do it better than Chris Hemsworth. And Samuel L. Jackson, man. Okay, I just have to say, my dad, uh, he has a like-hate relationship with uh, Nick Fury in the cinematic universe, and to, by, by extension, Nick Fury in modern day Marvel. He, uh, I, I don't want to sound like, I don't want to sound offensive or anything, but I'm just saying, um, he kind of likes, I, I'll, I'll just say this, he likes David Hasselhoff, Nick Fury, better than Sam Jackson, Nick Fury, because he thinks the, uh, African American Nick Fury is being overused now and I, you know, like, uh, how did he change the way Nick Fury to black Nick Fury? This is the disgrace. And it, every time, like, in, in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon and the, the the Avengers cartoons that have been coming out on Disney XD recently and pretty much everything Marvel ever, you know, the comic books and all that, he's been giving them a lot of serious crap. Like, as soon as he sees Samuel Jackson Nick Fury on the screen, he will immediately suck his teeth like... And he's like, why is he here? Where Where's David Hasselhoff Nick Fury? I understand, you know, he, he grew up on Marvel Comics and he grew up with the white Nick Fury and... You know, that's the one that he's used to the most and that he likes better. And having to deal with and get used to Sam, Sam Jackson, Nick Fury all the time, it's a, it's kind of a different, you know, change of pace for him. But still, though, you know, I, I, I welcome change whenever it's not a bad change. But I think Sam Jackson, in my opinion, does a great job as Nick Fury. I, re I really like him. I believe he was actually... Because... The African-American Nick Fury actually started out in the Ultimate Marvel comics, and he was intentionally based off of Nick, F uh, of Sam Jackson, from what I read. So uh, when Sam Jackson or something happened, uh, when they, uh, when that was brought to his attention back in the day, he said that, it, or someone said that, if th if there's ever like an Avengers films to get Sam Jackson to play Nick Fury. And lo and behold, we got him today with Sam Jackson, Nick Fury, so yeah. The trailer came out for Age of Ultron, and I'm looking forward to it, honestly, because there's still so much that we don't know, unless you, you're you like a, a huge fan of the comics and you know exactly what's going on. But then again, they always change stuff from the comics and the movies, so. I'm still looking forward to uh, Avengers Age of Ultron when it comes out next year. Probably not gonna be seeing an opening weekend, or maybe I will, I'm not sure. They said that things are gonna be changing with this. Some people are gonna be leaving the Avengers uh, in terms of the characters themselves. Everything was gonna be leading up to the Civil War films eventually in phase three of the cinematic universe, and a lot of things are gonna be changing, and new people will join the Avengers, and you know, a, a lot of stuff. And I'm gonna be going into this the same way I did with the Superior Spider Man comics. I'm gonna be sad that people will leave the Avengers, but at the same time, I'm gonna welcome any gradual changes that they make, assuming that they are, assuming that they work, of course. Because you know, who am I as a loyal fan of the cinematic universe to tell the directors and writers, you know, what they can and cannot do or what should be changed or anything? You know, I could, I could express my opinion about it, but I don't really have an opinion about what should be changed, and I think they're doing all right, anyways. Avengers: Age of Ultron. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. Can't wait to see it next year. Although eventually, when uh, Infinity War Part One and Part Two uh, start to come out, I'm gonna be like, Ugh, now I have to deal with this whole Part One, Part Two BS because I, I I've never went to a film that has like a, a Part One and then a Part Two to it outside of Star Wars, but I don't really count those. I remember I think it was the Twilight Saga that started, and then afterwards went on to like the Hunger Games or like Harry Potter and all that. No, I think Harry Potter started it actually with Deathly Hollows Part One and Two, and I actually did see uh both films. So, but not in theaters. But it's gonna be a real tiresome kind of thing because when they explicitly mention from the start that there's gonna be like a Part Two to it, then. You already know that the part one film is going to be like kind of a long story and yeah but whatever i'm actually i still have to go see captain america winter soldier and door to dark world because i haven't actually gotten to see those films yet so i have to actually go out and see those uh before then i hope they're on netflix you know maybe i could catch them later on but yeah but that's all i have to say about age of ultron really i, I don't i don't know much from beyond the trailers and i haven't read the original uh, ultron comics so yeah, I'm going to be going into this completely blind unless I decide to read up on some supplementary materials, which I probably will do inevitably uh, when the film comes out. But yeah, that's all I have to say. So moving on, we're going to switch over to DC Comics. And it, and uh, keep in mind, this is the only DC Comics movie that we're going to be talking about, as I mentioned earlier. Because it is the only one that is coming out soon that I'm actually interested in. And that is, as we all know, Batman vs. Superman. 
Dawn of Justice, coming out in 2016. So I will have to say, this also goes back to a, uh, a currently at this moment in time still unuploaded up episode of Team Triforce, which will probably be uploaded sometime later on. We, we, we had an episode dedicated to Marvel vs. DC uh, film-wise, and we je we, uh, uh you know, I, sh I shouldn't spoil the episode, but um, we were we, we were giving DC a lot of a lot of hit and misses when it came when it came to their films because my my good friend Henry put out a solid point. DC does have a lot of great animated films, and I definitely agree with that. You know, we have Batman, Superman, Apocalypse. We have all the Justice League films like Justice League Doom. There's the Superman vs. the Elite and All Star Superman, and you know all the all these films that have been coming out. And you know, I want to see Flashpoint and the recent one that came out with the alternate universe with owl man and everything which i hear both are both are good as as to be expected and also the upcoming aquaman one which looks really good actually yeah dc has a lot of great films animation wise but the thing is though is that when it comes to live action dc is afraid to be funny and have a little bit of comic relief as marvel has been doing with the cinematic universe because if you were to compare dc films e compare the dark knight films and man of steel to uh the recent marvel cinematic films and you will see a lot of differences in them marvel is definitely not afraid to be funny and not take itself seriously when it has to because because you know like a, f a freaking you know raccoon and a woodman you know how 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 would you expect to take that, you know, seriously in a film that is supposed to be like the galactic version of the Avengers? What I'm trying to say is that DC needs to lighten up a bit. It's kind of funny because, you know, Batman full of darkness. I did go out to see Man of Steel, I think, opening weekend. And to be honest, I don't have too many problems with it. The, the, uh, the thing is, though, is that I do kind of agree that Superman shouldn't be this person who's just causing destruction and this superhero that people don't want to see be righteous or heroic anymore because I was watching this very interesting documentary a while back uh, about the origins of DC Comics and uh, it started out with the origin of Superman who is obviously the first DC superhero at least you know that's uh, what I remember from it so don't quote me on that <laughs> it basically started out as this role model kind of guy Superman is basically a person that people would like to become you know they want to be heroic they want to stand up for themselves and they want to not basically save people but you know protect them when they can or just show that they can stand up to their troubles and stuff like i think the superman fans can uh or at least superman aficionados can sp speak for me better than i can because yeah, I totally agree. Superman is supposed to be this uh this totally righteous dude that saves a day and still has weaknesses and troubles to deal with in the end. Isaac himself put out a very interesting point in that episode we did. It's kind of sad that we in not nowadays we no longer live in a world where we want to see Superman be this totally awesome dude that I would like to get saved by if I ever somehow get pushed off of a building and save us from evil villains and such. Nowadays, people want to see Superman uh, beat the crap out of people and, you know, f fight other fictional characters in mediums. Before I start a ruckus in the comments about Superman fighting fictional characters, I'm going to uh, stray off of that and just go straight to my point. I kind of agree. I kind of hate that Superman is now this person who causes destruction and now people just want to see you fight other muscular, muscular dudes. Because, you know, that, 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 that's the entire thing that you can get out of Batman vs. Superman from the, from the title alone. Batman is going to fight Superman. He's going to probably have this whole mech suit with or have kryptonite gauntlets or something like that. I don't know. Dope. Like, it, it's freaking Batman. People will make up some sort of thing to have him win against Superman. They do that all the time on these comic book forums, and I have seen plenty of them. It kind of harkens back to this one Brave and the Bold episode of Batman I saw. It, it, I think it's actually episode one where Blue Beetle or whoever his name is... He was talking to his friend about uh, who would win in a fight between Superman and Batman, and he said, Batman, because, you know, he has kryptonite. And then right afterwards, he says, all right, who would win in a fight between Batman and Superman, and Batman doesn't have kryptonite? And then he says, Batman, because he still carries kryptonite anyways. I'm like, really? You have to be one of those Batman fans? <sighs> But honestly, though, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, that's not the mindset I'm gonna be going into Dawn of Justice with, though, because I am, I know, obviously, this is what DC Comics wants me to do, but regardless, I'm gonna be going to see the movie anyways, because I'm gonna give it a shot, and I'm gonna see where DC is going with their whole equivalent to the cinematic universe. You know, I'm, I'm now referring to it as the DC Cinematic Universe, and I'm hoping that it can live up to that title, because so far, Man of Steel was sort of adequate, but it wasn't entirely a hit. 
because I'm pretty sure Superman is not supposed to be destroying Metropolis while taking care of this one evil thing. Like, I understand Zod is from Krypton, and by default, that means that, you know, destruction it, uh, will ensue inevitably, and he'll probably use the environment around him as a threat to end the fight against Clark, but still. I'm just hoping that they can tone down the buildings being destroyed and all the destruction and not listen to all the fans who are like, Oh, Batman will win because he has kryptonite and he's because he's Batman, he's smart, he's always prepared for anything. Like, like, listen, I just want to get this out of the way. I love Batman. I freaking love me some Batman. Batman Year One is one of my favorite DC animated films. And I'll sit down and watch Batman the Animated Series any day. But listen... He is not prepared for every situation, all right? In fact, you know, I don't even know if this guy will have any kryptonite at first, like, like when he first fights Superman. If he, do, if he does fight Superman, we don't even know if he's... We don't even know if the two are actually going to fight each other because, for all we know, the title could be misleading and it might actually be a battle of wits or something like that. Like, who who is the better superhero? Who is more intelligent or something like that? But, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be taking all the assumptions about this film with a grain of salt, and I'm going to be giving it the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I am going to go see Dawn of Justice no matter what. Maybe not opening weekend, but I will see it anyways, and I will see how it compares to other Marvel films. I really do think that DC should take their time. I know it'll take a while for us to have a Justice League film by me saying this, but I think they should take their time and give the other DC superheroes a chance in the, their own film. You know, just ju give everyone their chance in, in the limelight. All right? Because I want Wonder Woman to have her own film. I want Green Lantern to have his, uh, well, well, he, he had his own film, but that's not part of this, uh, this new universe. And uh, even then, I heard it, like, even though, even though I was okay with it, it didn't really do that good with other people. You know, like, I, I want the Justice League to have their own individual films, all right? Even if you only have to do, like, the main four or five, like, you know, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Batman, and all that. I, I, I don't care, as long as you give them time to develop their character, because I don't want them to just seemingly squeeze all of these uh, superheroes together without any character development and without having to rush in all of their backstories into one single film. It, it's what I mentioned earlier. Marvel is doing it right by giving each superhero their own chance in the spotlight and a chance to explain who they are to the general audiences because not that many people know who Ant-Man or the Guardians of the Galaxy or, you know, even freaking Thor. The entire United States and the rest of the world didn't know who these people are unless they were comic book geeks. Because of these films, those superheroes on are now officially relevant again, and people now pick up their comics, they now play as them in the video games that come out, they watch the cartoons and all that with, the, with these characters in it, and all that stuff. And I know technically the Justice League is still relevant no matter what, you know, like Green Arrow is relevant because of his new TV show, Flash is still relevant, Batman will always be relevant, Superman is always relevant, Wonder Woman is always relevant. I know it's kind of different comparing Marvel superheroes and DC superheroes because DC is, is generally more well-known than Marvel and they're essentially timeless characters that people grew up with for almost a hundred years. But I still think that this new universe and with new new versions of these characters to get used to, we have to be used to how these characters are. Like the New 52, I believe, they put out a whole bunch of like, you know, the, like there's a Superman comic, there's a Batman comic, there's a Wonder Woman comic. And at the same time, there's also a Justice League comic. So not only do we have actual time to get used to these superheroes, how they start to develop in this new alternate continuity of DC Comics... But we also get to see them unite at the same time in this other one while still getting to experience character development at the same time. That's generally what I have to say about, you know, Dawn of Justice. Well, I'm, I'm hoping it does good. I'm crossing my fingers, but I'm not gonna hope too much for it. So yeah, good luck, Superman, Batman, you know, don't kill each other. You know, we still have a Justice League film to do. Uh, moving forward to X-Men Apocalypse. Now I'm gonna start this off by saying this. I am not the biggest X-Men fan in my family. That honor goes to my sister herself, who is really huge on X-Men. She loves Wolverine. Like, I can't actually list all of her favorite X-Men off the top of my head. She, she's a big fan of the franchise, and by extension, she loves the films as well. You know, she's not too hardcore of a comic book geek, but she does mostly follow the films and stuff like that, so she doesn't have too much complaints about the films. I'm pretty sure maybe she does, but yeah, I don't know. But that doesn't mean that I don't like the X-Men. I do like the X-Men. You know, I've gone out of the way to see most of their films. I think the majority of their films are fun to watch. They're adequate. They're really good. Some films I do have some issues with. I, 
you guys can probably guess which ones they are but let me speak about days of futures pass which just came out a while ago we we there was originally a team triforce episode recorded for me and henry retrospecting on days of futures pass but unfortunately that episode is long gone due to recording issues so well i want to apologize about that but i'm gonna talk about my thoughts on on that movie before i talk about apocalypse so i thought days of futures pass was or days of future past i don't I don't know how you say it, but I thought it was a fantastic film. I thought it was probably the best X-Men film we've had in a really long time. And it essentially fixed everything that was wrong with like w with the film franchise itself. It had a lot of great acting in it. I thought that Hugh Jackman once again did a, a fantastic job as Wolverine. Like you can't really cast any other actor to play Wolverine. I think Hugh Jackman really is the definitive Wolverine no matter what. So I just want to say in advance, if he... If X-Men ever crosses over into the cinematic universe one day, I hope that they bring back Hugh Jackman because he is the only guy I believe that essentially is Wolverine. It's kind of weird though because he's Wolverine is apparently shorter than everyone in the comics, but here he just he sized as like a regular person because of his actor, but I don't mind that anyways. I also think that Patrick Stewart is a fantastic Professor X. Whenever I see him come up on screen, I always like to fix up my impression of Professor X like, Hello, Logan. I couldn't control my powers again. I came from like a Marvel uh, versus Capcom one ending, but but anyways, Days of Future Past. I went into the movie generally hoping that it would be a great film and that it would fix any problems that people had with the previous X-Men films. The last film that I saw before then, which led up to Days of Future Past, was The Wolverine, and I thought that was a generally generally great film. I know, I know people are gonna like rant on me about how they're pretty much giving Wolverine too much time in the spotlight and that he's overrated and that they should give the spotlight to another X-Men for once. But you know what, though? I actually do agree that, you know, they really do need to give Wolfie a break and they need to give it to someone else. I don't know who they would give it to, you know, maybe Cyclops or Gambit. You know, actually, I actually would like to see a Gambit film because he's actually one of my favorite X-Men. I thought that The Wolverine, regardless, was, was a, uh, a very interesting film. I was kind of hoping that with that post-credit ending that we got leading up to Days of Future Past that... Everything would uh, be okay because, you know, we, we all know, well, most of us know what happened in the Days of Future Past comic. You, you, they go back in time and, um, you know, they have to stop the Sentinels from being made and from the whole human slash mutant apocalypse from happening. And I thought that this film did a pretty great job at uh, portraying that original comic book storyline. I'll just say this right now. If you happen to be a huge fan of the X-Men comics, then by all means, go ahead and go watch this film. There is nothing, absolutely nothing to be worried about unless for whatever reason you hate any of the actors in the film, but why would you? But, you know, Jennifer Lawrence does a fantastic mystique. Ian McKellen, once again, does a great uh, Magneto. Everyone is who you expect them to be in the X-Men. I thought that this was a fantastic sequel to... X-Men The Last Dance slash X-Men First Class slash The Wolverine. Yeah, th this entire film was the sequel to like three different movies. <laughs> Without spoiling the plot too much, I thought that Days of Future Pass was really good. If you ask me, I think it's probably my favorite X-Men film and the definitive one at, at most. So definitely go check it out if you haven't already. I'd be surprised if you haven't. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on Netflix. Let me check right now for you guys. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, as of this recording, it's uh, not available on Netflix at the moment, so you guys will probably have to find another way to watch the movie. I guess rent it on DVD or something, because you, you can still rent DVDs from Netflix, so if you guys want to do that, then go right ahead. But regardless, how, how, however way you see it, this is a fantastic film. And I'm really looking forward to X-Men Apocalypse. I have... N I can't really say too much about X-Men Apocalypse, because I don't really know too much about the X-Men mythos and by extension, the Apocalypse mythos overall. So I'm really hoping that once again, it is just just the greatest film as uh, I'm, I'm really getting tired of saying Days of Future Past, so I'm just going to say this film. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that Apocalypse is as good as this film and really goes above and beyond with uh, what the X-Men film franchise has done so far. A uh, fun fact, actually, it's kind of weird, but when me and uh, I think we explained this in our in our TFC 5th anniversary video, but for some strange reason, uh, oh, actually, we found out the reason why behind that, but they had put an X-Men Days of Future Past promo as one of the post credit scenes of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, so we kind of thought that would have meant that Fox and Sony are fin finally coming together to, like, make a crossover or something like that, I don't know, but it was actually the result of uh, Mark Webb or someone, I don't, I, I don't know who it was, but 
one of the people who worked on Amazing Spider-Man 2, in order to direct Days of Future Past, they had to... Uh, I said it again. In order to direct the X-Men film, they had to promote that X-Men film in one of Sony's, like, you know, Spider-Man films. So, there you have it. But I think he did a fantastic job. And, yeah, like I said before, recommendation. And... I wish 20th Century Fox luck with uh, Apocalypse because they finally got their audience back and don't want to lose that again. Otherwise, you know, Marvel's going to be driving up to their building and be like, uh, hey, uh, I heard you guys weren't doing so good with X-Men. Uh, we'll just take that off of your hands like we should have 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, by the way, you guys still have that Fantastic Four. Yeah, uh, let me get that, too. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you guys don't have to deal with that trouble. You know, it's bad enough you guys can't do with X-Men. We the Fantastic Four. Uh, we, we all know. We all know how the last films turned out. I'm going to stop being weird now. Okay. Next film. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Oh, my God. The first Guardians of the Galaxy film was fan freaking tastic i was worried about it at first like i was with the ever superhero movies on this list but you know from the reviews i've been hearing you know rotten tomatoes and internet movie database and all these other uh fancy smashy critic websites have been given it 90 percent ratings so i was going into it with uh, high expectations and uh, it actually came out on my birthday i think but me and Lawrence went out to go see it, and uh, we talked We talked about this in a currently unreleased video. I'll just say right now, we uh, thought it was a fantastic film. It kind of goes against what I said earlier about how Marvel is doing a fantastic job of giving every character their own film and giving them time to develop until they finally get to their uh, film of unity. But I thought that regardless, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, th these these are the main characters of the film, you know. They, they're, they're, they're not like the Avengers where they're different and they have their own individual missions. No, the Guardians of the Galaxy is one whole team overall. Like, you don't really get too much out of them being separate. You know, maybe you do in the comics, but film-wise, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they would be as successful or anything. But anyways, my point is, I thought that this film was really fantastic. And then again, when you really think about it, the Guardians of the Galaxy film isn't really too focused on the other members. It's really more focused on Star-Lord uh, overall because, you know, n not just because he's the main character of the entire team, but at the same time, the movie starts out with him as a little kid and when his mother is uh, dying and he's g she's giving him the Walkman and everything and then he gets abducted by aliens who raise him eventually as one of their own and he ditches them later on in the film and they try to hunt him down and then he fools them by the end of it. Uh, spoiler alert if you still haven't seen it. Why, why haven't you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Like, w w after this is all over, go watch it right now if you haven't. Like, I don't know, I don't know if it's on Netflix. You know what, let me check that too. Oh wow, I'm surprised this film isn't also on Netflix, huh? Strange. But uh, as of this recording, it recently did come out on DVD, so... I recommend purchasing this film. I don't recommend renting it. This is th th this is a keeper right here. It it's part of the cinematic universe. That's automatically a given, but I don't know. I just thought the film was funny. It was action-packed. It had a whole load of hilarious and awesome emotional scenes. It's essentially everything you've ever wanted in a superhero flick. Or, well, I wouldn't say superhero flick, but, uh, I don't know. In an intergalactic bounty hunting team or whatever. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going off of my words here. You know why? Because I don't know anything about Guardians of the Galaxy above this film. Uh, Lawrence actually got into the comics before the film itself because they wanted to get ready and read some supplementary material that he got on Free Comic Book Day to uh, get ready for the film itself. It's funny because when we went to go see the film, he was actually pointing out like, yep, this guy's in here. Oh, is this guy part of the Guardians? Oh, yeah, he is now, I remember. Yeah, he's like, he, he's pointing out like the comic. He's pulling out the comic covers from like this, his cell phone and everything during the film itself. And that was funny. Oh, yeah, fun fact, ladies and gentlemen, Spider-Man is actually in that film. So yeah, we didn't need any contracts from Sony. We didn't need any like copyright laws to avoid or to get the contract rights over or anything like that. We actually did have a Spider-Man cameo in the film. However, I'm not going to mention how he actually appears in the film. So I challenge you guys with your powerful eyes, if you do have those, to spot Spidey if you can. He is hidden somewhere in the film. He does technically have a cameo appearance. If you if you manage to find him, you know, post a comment down below, and whoever does that gets to have their topic suggestion featured in one of the later episodes. Even though I'm even though I'll take those anyway, but I, I don't know. I'll come up with a better price later. But regardless, 
Guardians of the Galaxy was done fantastically. I await the day that they actually come to unite with the uh, the Avengers. I don't know how that will work out, but. I don't know, maybe dur during Civil War, but I think everyone did a great job playing their character. I thought all the characters were written accurately to how they were in the comics. Rocket Raccoon was really freaking funny. And Groot. How can we forget about Groot? Who, uh, oh wait, I can't talk about spoilers. Darn. Groot is one of my favorite characters from the film. He's everyone's favorite character from the film. We know we are all Groot. Oh damn, was that a spoiler in itself? Ugh, never mind. But... Forget what you just heard. But right now, I'm supposed to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Thing is, though, is that uh, we really don't know much about Guardians 2. And I think that's part of Phase 3. And that's probably the only film I'm going to be talking about from Phase 3. But even then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go against what I just said right now. I don't, I don't really know if there's too much to go off of because I don't know. I don't know. Are they going to go to Earth? Or are they going to find some new galaxy to guard or something like that? I'm not exactly sure what... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 will, will even be about. I know everyone will be back. I know uh, hopefully Stanley will have another cameo in there. God bless his soul. Oh yeah, it's funny. I, I think uh, originally I, I read up on this article. Stanley's cameo in this film in Guardians of the Galaxy was supposed to be completely different. Uh, originally, it was supposed to be him inside of a. Uh, you guys, uh, for those who who saw the film, you guys all know that scene where they're in that room where that person collected all the different species from throughout the galaxy and has them as like his personal trophies and those glass cases. Stanley was supposed to be one of them and he was supposed to stick out the metal finger at Groot or something like that. But uh, Disney thought that was uh, too gruesome and would be kind of it would be kind of weird and dark scene. The creator of Marvel, the hero to many, is sticking up his finger at. At one of the film's heroes so his cameo appearance was changed to what it was early on when he's pretty much uh the ladies man that uh rocket and Groot are looking at before they join the guardians or get arrested or whatever but yeah guardians of the galaxy was fantastic if lawrence was here he'd probably have a lot more to say but really i don't want to give away too much anyway so if you haven't seen it go check it out for yourself and i look forward to guardians 2 whatever it will be about when it comes out eventually in 2017 oh Oh, 2017. Th th there you go. There, Yo, Hasbro, you guys heard that there's your first competition. Be careful about when you release the MLP movie. Because Guardi Guardians 2 is going to sneak up on them, and yeah. But uh, I guess the last film I really have to talk about on here is The Amazing Spider-Man 3, which comes out in 2018. Or at least it's uh predicted to come out in 2018. This film was originally supposed to be out in 2016, but unfortunately some stuff happened and it got pushed two years extra forward again uh there's not really too much to go off of because there's not much information revealed about spidey 3 you know we don't know if mary jane is going to be in it we don't know uh what exactly like who's the villain going to be you know maybe the sinister six but then again they have their own film coming up and venom as well and even then you know venom is supposed to take place before amazing spider-man 4 so i don't know if he'll actually show up in spidey 3 but there's uh, not a lot of good things going on right now between sony and spidey because uh I'm pretty sure most of you by now already all know about the uh, the unfortunate uh, Sony hacking scandals that have been going on because of the uh, because of a certain film that got canceled recently. I think you guys all know the whole uh, charade of everything. Because of that, a whole bunch of information was leaked, like how uh, apparently Andrew Garfield is no longer might no longer be playing Spidey in the films, and uh, there's rumors coming out that they they're actually interested in getting Tobey Maguire back. I'm not, I'm not actually sure how that's going to play out exactly. Oh yeah, also I heard that uh, good news. The Amazing Spider-Man, or at least maybe Spider-Man himself. I don't know about the Amazing Spider-Man universe that Sony set up. But at least the character of Spider-Man, he is capable of showing up in uh, Captain America 3. So uh, he could show up for the Civil War storyline that's going to go on. Because Spider-Man has a very big role in the story in, in the uh, in the Civil War storyline in the, in the original Marvel comics. So... He's pretty much required to be there whenever they get to that arc. And they will have to get to that arc eventually. So it's not like Marvel really has any other choice. Like, I don't know. I, I can't see any other character being as intelligent and ri risky as Spidey was in, in that storyline. But regardless, we, we there's a very high, very high chance that we're going to be getting Spidey. But he's not going to be played by Andrew Garfield in that either. And it looks like he Andrew Garfield might not be playing Spidey ever again anywhere. I heard Sonny is interested in firing him, which is actually unfortunate because... Okay, listen, listen. I might have a whole episode about this some other time, but I just want to say this right now. I like both the original Spider-Man trilogy 
and the Amazing Spider-Man films that are going on right now. I know people have problems with the original Spider-Man films. You know, they're old, they're primitive. Spider-Man 2 is the best film, while Spider-Man 3 has, like, a lot of, like, a lot of people have problems with that one, even though... Okay, I I'll be honest right now, like, I'm gonna be the odd guy out of the entire internet, but I really don't have a problem with Spider-Man 3. You know, I have issues with it, but I don't have... I, I, don't, I don't think it's, like, the death of the original Spider-Man films. There was supposed to be a Spider-Man 4, but it got cancelled for different reasons that had nothing to do with 3. I'm pretty sure that's the whole story behind it as I read up from it. And that pretty much led to the whole Amazing Spider-Man films in the first place. And I think that both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield respectively portray Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in their own great ways. I do think that when it comes to depending on... What Spider-Man I think is more capable and who is, who is more trustworthy of being able to save the day, as Nostalgia Critic put it out in his recent video. I do think that Andrew Garfield is more up to the task when it comes to saving the day. I want the night that Tobey Maguire put on a very a very acceptable performance of Peter Parker back then. Because those are the films I grew up on. I, I really do like those films. I own all three films on DVD and I always go back to them at least once a year to relive my childhood growing up with like anticipating the next spider-man film like who's he gonna fight next you know what's gonna happen in this film you know i, I remember when sp the trailers for spider-man 2 started surfacing on tv when i was a kid and i got really excited because i you know i i, I sure i sure as i wanted to see spidey fight doc ock you know with these this new villain with these m like metallic octopus arms and everything but overall i'm just saying i think that both spidey film series are fantastic all right. I don't think that they deserve the crap that people usually give them today. And really, it's just kind of ridiculous. It's, mo it's mostly coming from like the comic book people or people who are just like total fanboy slash fangirls of the original trilogy or the new trilogy or whatever. But, you know, that's that, n that's the thing with most franchises nowadays. You know, people don't like a reboot compared to the original or people don't like the original compared to the reboot. You're always going to have that with every single franchise that does that ever. There are some franchises that don't have that, thankfully. But at the same time, no matter what, you know, there's always going to be that one guy out there who just likes to ruin the fun for everyone. I think that both film series are good, alright? That's just my general viewpoint. Now, do I think that the Amazing Spider-Man films are going to be able to successfully continue with or without and uh, Andrew Garfield? I'm not exactly sure. I don't even know if Sony is still going to be able to produce them anymore since Marvel is starting to get the rights to Spidey back little by little. Or at least apparently they are, but... Regardless, I look forward to what's going to be happening in 2018 anyways, and... You know, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, you know, there's a reason why there's a picture of Spidey in my channel art, and... Why we always, why me and Lawrence always give Spidey more credit than he deserves because he's the face of Marvel. He is, he is our favorite super, one of our favorite superheroes of all time. Spider-Man is a, is a timeless character who is essentially the living definition of character development in comic books. It's not really mostly about Spider-Man when it comes to when it comes to the, his comics. It's mostly about Peter Parker and all the drama that goes on in his life with trying to be a superhero and also trying to be you know one of uh, like one of your standard real life guys that you hang out with on Saturdays you know and he was one of the first comic book characters to ever focus on that and as a result he's gained a huge following because of it he's also the very first superhero to date multiple women throughout his entire franchise as a whole <laughs> even more than like you know Batman and Superman and you know any other comic book character you can think of but regardless i trust that sony will continue to do a great job I, you know i like i, I liked spider-man uh, amazing spider-man 2 i thought it was all i thought it was completely all right and that it was great you know we, if you guys want to hear more about it about our thoughts on spider-man 2 then go check out our video of the fun channel fifth anniversary in our fun channel adventures playlist but i can't wait till 2018 it's gonna be a long four years jeez but Hey, I do know two things. One, it's not competing with the MLP film, thankfully, so I don't have to worry about having to choose one film or the other, but obviously the answer would be MLP all the way. And two, I can definitely trust Sony will uh, still do a good job regardless, no matter who plays Spidey. You know, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they stop the whole, you know, promoting themselves multiple times throughout the film, because if you go see Amazing Spider-Man 2, you will see a lot a lot of Sony plugging in that film. Like, every every t piece of technology that Peter was using in that film was Sony. Sony computers, Sony laptops, you know, Sony's Windows 98 monitors, and 
you know, S Sony Walkmans. Uh, yeah, there was a Sony Walkman and Guardians also. But, you know, the, like, the Sony everything, Sony phones, everything was Sony. It, like, like if I, I, I wouldn't be surprised that if he bought a Wii U, it would say Sony Wii U on it. Or, like, or you know, next film, he buys, like, a PS4 with sports on it or, you know, something like that. I, I'm not exactly sure, but regardless, I hope this, like... There's nothing wrong with promoting yourself in a film, you know. It, it's it's their film. They have every right to do it. But I just, I'm just hoping they, you know, chill out, you know. Because I kind of got tired of seeing it over and over again. Like, yes, Sony, I get it. You're a multi-billion dollar company that sells all kinds of household technology and all kinds of revolutionary products for years. And, you know, I get that. I, and I'm interested in your products too. At least most of them anyways. And... You know, you get you guys don't have to shove that in my face every single two seconds. I just want to see Spidey kick some people's butt and discover more about his parents' past and everything. You know, I don't want to have to buy like a Walkman from 1990s or something like that, like on e off of eBay and anything. You guys won't even get any actual credit or like you know profit from from that. But anyways, you you guys all know what I'm talking about. Well, that was a really uh messy unorganized episode. <laughs> But uh, regardless, it is a meatloaf blog episode, and I managed to get it out regardless. So I'm sorry for how weird this entire episode sounded. Again, it's my first time being on my own, and uh, I should probably better prepare myself in advance, you know, with, like, notes to go off of in case I forget anything. But, uh, oh, behind the scenes information, guys. But <laughs> again, I, I'm sorry if I sounded weird throughout this entire thing. I know I have during the recording of this, and there's a lot of editing that's going to be done. But um, regardless, I don't care. You know, I got my opinions out of the way, and I didn't manage to spoil too much from any of the films that I talked about. I hope you enjoyed what I had to talk about, and I'm sorry once again if I didn't talk about any of the films you wanted me to uh, discuss. But I suppose that can be for a future episode, but not anytime soon. But uh, regardless, that leads to my questions of the episode. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what do you think of Avengers 2? What do you think of uh, Dawn of Justice, X-Men uh, Apocalypse, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Amazing Spider-Man 3? You know, what do you think about those films? What comic book adaptation films are you looking forward to anyways uh, beyond those? You know, what did you think about my thoughts on them? What did you uh, think about the films that precede them? Uh, leave your comments below, and uh, also if you have any topic suggestions for a future episode, please leave them uh, in the comments as well, as I do read the comments and I do take them into consideration. If I think it's an interesting enough subject to cover, so once again, I want to I want to thank Isaac Clips for uh, suggesting this topic. Please go su subscribe to his channel and subscribe to Team Triforce because season two is coming out pretty soon, guys. Uh, we just finished the recording of the uh, the last episode, so you're gonna start seeing those servers on there. Hopefully soon enough, you know, you know, Isaac, if you're listening to this, don't take your time, buddy. But seriously, you know, put as much effort as you can into them. But once again, I thank you all for listening, and I'm sorry once again for how. Uh, weird this episode is but hey you know gotta go with the flow so don't forget to like leave a comment subscribe share with your friends and everything and look forward to episode five which is coming out really soon guys it's going to be a completely different episode and i won't give too much away about what it's going to be about but i will say it is very explanatory and filled with a lot of love and tolerance so um, see you guys uh yeah uh, you, you know, i'm gonna i'm gonna stop talking now but um bye guys thank you see you later